in this lesson, we'll be building the options screen, which is just going to allow us to actually progress from the uh, actual home screen to a screen that looks just like this, where we can go from this screen to themes, which is going to be another screen within our application where a user can actually change uh, the primary color profile of the application. Or they can click this other list item, which is going to open up an external link to fixer.io, which is the API we're actually using to convert all of the different currencies and figure out exactly what that conversion rate is. We're going to go ahead and actually use the list item component we built previously, and this is going to be a scrollable list. I know everything's kind of bumped up here, uh, but we'll take care of that in a future lesson. So if you want to go ahead and build this, two components you're going to want to look for are the list item which we set up previously and then the scroll view to actually make this a scrollable component within React Native. So looking at our actual application, we'll be starting right now, this is just the currency list screen, so the first thing we want to do is actually replace that. So I'm going to go down to our screens directory and I'll create an options.js and that's going to be our options that's going to be our options screen. And then we'll just go ahead and create a basic options uh, function which is going to actually be our component and that's just going to return null for right now and I'll say export default options save that and then we'll go to our index.js and we'll replace this currency list right now with options make sure we import from the correct directory as well or the correct file save that and we should have a plain white screen perfect so now we can actually go ahead and start setting up our options screen. Let's go ahead and get the imports taken care of. As always, we want to import React from React. And then we also want to import uh, component because we're going to have a few methods on this screen. So we're just going to make this a component-based React component. And then from React Native, the first few things we need to import are first off the scroll view and we're also going to import the status bar so we can set the, what the status bar actually looks like on this screen. And from our application we're going to import the list item and the separator from our list component. Alright, so we've got all of our basic imports set up. Now we can go ahead and actually start setting up this screen. So we're going to say class options extends component and we know we're going to need to handle that press on the uh, actual theme row and the, the fixer.io row. So we're going to set up two functions on our, our component. Uh, first is going to be handle themes press. And we'll just have that there ready to go for when we need it. So we'll say press themes. And then we're also going to say handle site press. And do the exact same thing here and we're just going to say press site. Now we can go ahead and actually set up our render method which will actually return our component. So inside of there we'll set up our return and then we'll inside of here we'll have our scroll view. And the first thing we'll do for this scroll view is actually set the status bar. And if you remember we want to set this to translucent is equal to false. And we also want to set bar style to be default so that we have the dark dark text on iOS. Make sure I don't have errors. And I forgot an S on this component, so we'll make sure we do that correctly. Save it, and we should see the bar is now visible. The next thing we want to do is actually go ahead and add these list items. And before we had to use them in a flat list, but the way we set them up uh, with the list item, the separator component, we can just render those like normal components in this uh, scroll view as well. So we'll just do exactly that. And we'll say list item. And if we remember back to the API for the list item, first thing we can pass is text. So this one's going, the text for this one's going to be themes. We can also pass an on press. And for the themes list item, we want to say this dot handle themes press. Let's also render one for the fixer.io list item. So we're going to say text is equal to fixer.io. And on press, we're going to call this dot handle sites press. Save this, see how it looks. And we've got the rows, we can tap them, uh, these functions are being called, but we want to make sure we add that separator to it. So between these two list items, I'm just going to call separator, render that, keep making that same typo. 
and I can't spell separator correctly to save my life. Okay, separator, we've got that separator between our list rows. And if we look at our mockup, we can see we're just about there. We just need to add these custom icons. So these custom icons, I'm going to want to set them from this screen uh, just because it's customized and we don't want to actually update the list item because nowhere else is really going to use a similar interaction. Uh, so first thing I'll do is actually import the ion icons from at expo forward slash vector icons. And we're going to have two different icons, one for the list item uh, for the themes, one for the fixer.io theme. And we're going to have some configuration things. So I just want to actually paste those or set those up at the top of my file. So I'm only defining them once. That way if I need to update it in the future, it's easy to do so. So I'll say const icon color, and that's going to be equal to uh, 868686. And then we're also going to say icon size, and that's going to be 23. Uh, now we can actually go ahead and render our icons. Let's give ourselves a bit of space here. And we haven't set this up on our list item yet, but let's just say we can define a custom icon. And at this point, we want to actually return the ion icons that we imported previously. And we want to specify a name for that. Uh, the name I'm going to use for this icon is iOS-arrow forward. I also want to specify the color, and the color is going to be that icon color we defined before, and then the size of it will be equal to the icon size. So that one should be good to go. Let's just go ahead and copy the same thing down to the fixer IO before we actually go ahead and actually update the list item component to render that. But instead of the iOS arrow forward icon, we're going to use iOS dash link here. Okay, so we know we're going to be passing this custom icon prop down to the list item. We just need to tell the list item to render it when it's, when it's necessary. So I will go to my components directory list list item and let's close this so we've got some more space um, open this all up a bit and then what we're going to say is custom icon that's the proper passing and by default it's just going to be null because most of the time there won't be an icon to actually be rendered and here you can see the logic we're using to actually render the default icon the one with the check mark in the background color and basically all we want to do after this is just say custom icon. Uh, that way if an icon is being passed to it, it'll just automatically be rendered. Otherwise, null will be rendered, which nothing's actually going to be rendered in that case. So by saving this, we can see that those two icons now appear on the right side. And then we see we're getting this error up here, and that's just saying that we haven't defined custom icon in our prop types. So we'll go down to our prop types and just say prop types dot element, uh, meaning it's got to be a valid React element or react native element to be rendered here. So it's looking good here on iOS. One last thing I want to do is actually on this separator component, I want to add one to the bottom just because uh, I think it looks a little bit better. So we've got that all set up. Now we need to see what this actually looks like on Android. And looking at this version, we can see that it does indeed look the same. But if we compare it to our mockup, you can see that this link icon is different and this arrow forward icon is different. And using this ion icons library from Expo Vector Icons, uh, basically these are icons from Ionic, which is an Angular JS and Cordova way to build mobile apps. And something they do with the icon is actually namespace them for the platform. So we've got iOS ones and Android ones. And you can see that our icons here are actually prefixed with iOS. That works great for iOS, but we're also building for Android. So we want to go ahead and actually fix this and make it work for both platforms and feel as normal to that platform as we possibly can. To do that, we're going to go ahead and actually import the platform API from React Native. And with that, we can go ahead and set up a new variable where we're going to figure out what the appropriate prefix should be uh, for the icon. So we'll say create a new variable called icon prefix, and then we're going to check the platform.os. And then if it's equal to iOS, we'll just return iOS. Otherwise, we want to return MD, which is the prefix for 
the Android icons in the Ion icons package. So we've got that set up. Now we just need to actually use this. So we'll go down to our custom icon prop and then you can see this is where we're actually using it. So we're going to change this from just a uh, typical string and we'll use these back ticks so we can uh, pass some variables into our string and that's just using some of the new stuff in ES6 and right here we'll do a dollar sign and a curly brace and that allows us to actually pass a variable into this string and then it'll go ahead and return a string from this. And this is where we want to use that icon prefix variable we set up previously. Now we'll do the same thing down here for the iOS-link. So I'll delete this and then I'll create a new string, dollar sign opening, curly brace, closing, and we'll say icon prefix and then put that dash link in there. Uh, save this, let it re-render, and you can see we're now using the correct icons for Android here. And looking at the iOS simulator, we can see we're using the correct icons here when comparing it to uh, our actual mockups.